Hello everyone, my name is Costa and welcome to another episode of A Bunch of Blank Paper. Uh, today is going to be, again, a film analysis podcast. Uh, you see that I'm having a lot of episodes out now just to, uh, you know, fill in the gap that I had from June because I was really busy on my own things. You can check out my things in my website, www.costacalogidos.com for uh, upcoming workshops, very fascinating workshops about uh, writing your feature film and the creative writing and a lot of stuff that you can join us also and uh, join a nice uh, group of creatives and be with us and do stuff. So uh, today I decided to make um, a pause in my Synecdoche New York podcast. Uh, we are already in part two, so there is another uh, last part that's going to come, part three, that I'm going to analyze Synecdoche New York by uh, Charlie Kaufman. So I'm going to make a podcast today uh, regarding, again, Charlie Kaufman, but his new film that is on Netflix, and it's called I'm Thinking of Ending Things, which is an amazing, again, film by Charlie Kaufman. I've said so many times uh, about Charlie Kaufman that he is a genius in what he's doing, and he's, he's creating a totally different world. Uh, his own world, actually, not different, but his own world 100%. And uh, he's diving in and getting into some subjects that are normally, you know, really tough to di to discuss with friends. And, you know, especially the younger th you are, you, you don't want to discuss about these things. For example, loneliness and, and uh, death and all this miscommunication we have in our lives and stuff. So... By watching this uh, movie three times, third time yesterday with my friend Nikos Papoutsis, uh, I decided to make a podcast because I think that the third time that I saw it, I'm definitely sure what's going on and I just wanted to share it with you. So, let's dive in. Uh, Charlie Kaufman's theme on this one is uh, loneliness. I think that this is the main thing that he's, uh, uh, you know, discussing about. Um, uh Straight from the, uh, straight out the, uh, straight ahead, sorry, uh, straight ahead from the beginning, you can see uh, that he's putting Jake. The story is about Jake. I don't know if you if you haven't seen it, don't listen to this podcast. Just see it and then uh, listen to this podcast. Uh, Jake is uh, actually a janitor uh, in a school, and uh, we can see that in the beginning that he's actually looking out of the window um, and then we see Lucy, his imaginary girlfriend, uh, that actually uh, is looking above, he's looking on the top like he's looking on the window that actually the janitor, Jake, looks out from. So we can see that uh, he's old, very old, and uh, he's looking outside the window and then we see on the streets uh, Lucy, a nice young girl, uh, looking uh, up there. So we see immediately a connection. We establish a connection between them. So immediately Jake comes younger, like in his 40s, with a car to pick her up, to go to her to see, her, see his parents. The moment she enters the car, the dialogue is really faded back. So you can't actually... Here it's like really low. The, the the volume is really low. So uh, right right from the bat we understand that this is actually what he wants to do there. He's like explaining to you that this is uh, again a dreamlike uh, reality that Charlie Kaufman made. Uh, now we in the beginning I'm not you know I was not that sure because when you see Jake he's a uh, Behaving a little bit like a dog uh, because um, they're talking about stuff in the car. It's a, it's a 20 minutes drive. Uh, it's a 20 minutes drive uh, for us also. It's a real time 20 minutes drive uh, in the car going to his parents. But uh, in there, we, we hear some stuff about the dogs and diseases of dogs. And he has a bit of saliva on his lips. So this... Uh, led me to think that maybe he is a dog. Uh, but then when they reach the house also, when they reach the place of, of his parents and they go out, they start uh, waving at each other from the window. You know, the mother was on the top of the house waving outside. And uh, Toni Collette, she's amazing. She's amazing. I wouldn't be surprised if she's an Oscar candidate. She's amazing to the parts that he pl she plays. And then they wave, but... There is a snowstorm, and instead of getting in the house immediately when they exited the car, 
Uh, he says to uh, Lucy, let's go for a walk. I want to stretch my legs. So up to that point, I thought that he was a dog, actually, because stretching the legs and going for a walk outside the house and doesn't want to get in the house. You know, it's like dogs. When you take them out for a walk, they don't want to go in. But that was a false thing. It wasn't the thing that happened actually in the in the, in the the film. So uh, we there is a conversation in the car that's really interesting and also really sad at most times. But what he's doing, uh, Charlie Kaufman, is that he's putting the shy Jake that he never had a girlfriend in his life because he was really shy and maybe he was also ugly, uh, let's say, sort of, um, talking to his girlfriend, his imaginary girlfriend, about interesting stuff. So this is what he wants to do in his life. Uh, talking about interesting stuff with a girlfriend, with a girlfriend that he has. Um, so they're talking about poetry, they're talking about many things. And also a clue that he gives you all the time that this person doesn't exist, uh, the girlfriend doesn't exist, is that you see many times um, the girlfriend, Lucy, changes names. So there are a lot of nicknames you see. It's, it's Lucy, it's Lucia, it's Luisa. And then some sometime in the movie, she's also Ames, like Amy, but uh, the way you would be calling your girlfriend, like Ames, what's up, you know? So she changes a lot of names, she changes a lot of professions, like, uh, you know, like he's describing uh, a girlfriend, ideal girlfriend, uh, and then another ideal girlfriend that she will have all these things, uh, you know, that she's a poet, she's a doctor, she's a physicist, you know, all the things. She's a film critic. Uh, you see that when uh, Lucy is changing to a film critic after they got the ice cream, so she starts having also a very weird uh, old American accent like uh, in the 50s, you know, like a very Hollywood. And she changes also her tone of voice, uh, you know. So... She doesn't exist. Uh, she's an imaginary girlfriend that he takes home to meet the parents. Uh, so we also understand that when we see the parents in the house, that they are actually don't they don't have a nice connection from the first moment that they got in the house when the parents actually came down to meet them. Uh, the father actually doesn't, you know, they don't even look at each other when they're waving at each other, you know, like the, hey, hi, dad, how you doing? They don't even look at each other. And when she, the mother, goes to kiss him, uh, he was feeling like kind of, you know, like she's disgusting or something. So this immediately, straightforward, it shows, you, it shows to the audience the relationship he had with his parents as well, which was really, really bad. Um, so we, we understand that immediately. Before that, they went to the barn uh, before, before they entered the house. So in the barn, he always says, life is really bad in the barn. Life can be really bad in the barn. He repeats that two times. And uh, he just wants to show that he, he had a terrible life in this barn and this house because his parents didn't like him and they thought he was a loser and all that stuff. Um, Jake, uh, Jake, when they have the dinner, uh, start saying about the Trivial Pursuit Genius and Genius. You know, they had a misunderstanding if it was called Genius or Genius with his mother. But you see that he's the portrait, the portrait of, of Jake is like a, a very clever man, you know. A very strong hint also that he never had a girlfriend is like his father always says to him, Oh, yeah, finally Jake found someone. Finally Jake found someone. Finally Jake found someone. It's always like that. He always says that. Um, another point to make uh, to understand that, that this character, Lucy, doesn't exist is the paintings that she did that are actually not hers. They are real paintings from uh, painters that you can see actually once it goes to the basement, the real name of the painter is there. So she's not a painter, she's not a poet, she's nothing like that. It's, it's the reflection that he wants to have for the perfect girlfriend but the uh, the sad thing is that he never had a girlfriend any at all so uh actually when she goes to the basement because jake when they got in the house he was saying i'm afraid of the basement so so once he went to the basement and she saw the laundry there was a the washing machine running and then she got this um shirts from there four identical shirts the shirts that she got from there were the, were the janitor's shirts 
with the same uh, logo on the on the shirt. So this shows you the connection between Jake and the janitor. Is like now, present time, he's old and dies, and we will see that later on. Uh, so yeah, he's the janitor. Now um, we see the um, uh, the connection between the parents uh, and him is really important because he's like a child that has always problems with his parents. We see that also being said in a poem and uh, also in the dialogue in the car when he, um, they were talking about loneliness and uh, Jake asks Lucy to recite a poem of hers uh, and it's the saddest thing you've ever heard. <laughs> Beautifully written and the saddest thing you've ever heard. And um, this poem we see it written in a book in Jake's uh, room when uh, Lucy goes up there in the room to check his room out because Jake is, wasn't there. So he she was looking at uh, Jake's stuff and she found there everything that had to do with Jake and all these poems that she was reciting, but of course they were not hers, they were other persons, and all the books that he was mentioning, and all the poets he was mentioning, and all the films that he was mentioning, everything was in that room. And also there was a, um, a jug, a vase, with uh, ashes that you put, you know, the dead people's ashes in there, and the label was Jimmy, the dog. So that means that we are actually, she is visiting Jake's childhood uh, room, but in time, we are in the now that uh, he is old and his dog has died and everything like that. That's why we see uh, his parents becoming old and young in this house. So after, you know, some five minutes, you see uh, the father coming up and he's like 80 years old. So he's trying to show you that time passes by. And she says also that, that I don't think that time passes by. I think that we are still standing still and the time passes by through us. So that's a very important also line. Uh, what's really sad about Jake is that he was really taking care of his parents because um, this is actually maybe the, the problem as well that he couldn't be finding any girlfriend or, you know, because we are stuck in the, in the family thing and he was stuck with his uh, parents in the barn house. And, um, but we see when, when, uh, his mother died and we see her very old in the in the wheelchair uh, he was taking care of her really good and he says a line there also about that and it's like nobody notices when you're that good you know nobody notices you do so many good things and nobody notices so in the end of their life uh, like his parents they were taking care of uh, from uh, Jake uh, you know and Lucy also says you're so cute this is really uh, wonderful what you're doing. You didn't put your uh, your parents in an old house. Like the word he's referring, she's referring to the old, uh, you know, nurseries. It's called warehouse. Uh, you didn't do that. You stayed with them until the end of their lives and you were taking care of them. But the sad thing is that he couldn't take care of any girls uh, because he was really shy. And he was never getting chances with girls. Uh, all the girls we see in the film that they were in the school and they were young uh, were his classmates and they were making fun of him so we have references of the school all the time when he goes to the ice cream store the girls from the uh, from the school they're working there one of them is really shy and she's like the same character as jake uh and they exchange some very shy glances because you see jake when they go to the ice, ice cream store which is in the middle of nowhere and snow there they are the pretty girls of the school you know the typical pretty girls of the school that they are really snobbies and shit and we have also a very nice girl that comes and talks to Lucy and she tells her how beautiful you are and all this moment all this time that she's uh, ordering the ice cream uh, Jake stands away from the from the canteen with his back turned to the canteen and he's looking down like really shy you know so there you see the the connection of about everything uh, the shyness of him and how he feels really bad Actually, when they reach the canteen to take the, the ice cream canteen to take the, um, the ice cream, uh, Jake says to Lucy, uh, can you go and order it for me? Because if they see me, they won't uh, come. It's like the, the thing that he was witnessing all the time and he had in his life, you know. Uh, women are watching him, girls were watching him like he's a freak. 
And then he stayed in that school and then he became a janitor at that school. And it was his house, you know, school was his second house. He knew the place by heart. When they reached uh, the school to uh, throw away the litter, the, um, the cups that they got the ice cream, uh, he knew by heart all the rooms and everything, everything he was counting, like 130 classes and, uh, you know, rooms for classes and uh, that many, I don't know, 15, 50 uh, bathrooms. He knew everything about the school because he was always in that school, always. So his life was school, house, barn house. And then there was a stop at the ice cream place to get some ice cream and see also some girls that he liked in there. You know, one girl maybe, the, the shy one that he liked in there. So that's a very sad thing. And uh, this is the way he is describing it. Uh, now, the whole thing is about loneliness. The whole theme is about loneliness. So he created these girlfriends that are ideal for him. And when he's reaching to that school, he's entering there to see the guy he said to Lucy, I'm going in because he's watching us. His self was watching them, actually. And he enters the school. Then Lucy goes out because she was, she said, actually, before she exits the car, she says, I'm, I don't know how much time it takes for a person to freeze to death. And that's actually describing the way that the janitor, Jake, died. Because we see him in the car naked, dying uh, from cold, Right. So when she enters the school, we have this uh, uh, beautiful musical thing. Actually, she meets Jake, uh, the now Jake, uh, inside as a janitor, very fat. And like he is actually like a pig, like the pigs he was describing uh, in the barn. He said a story in the barn about the pigs that died because worms uh, were eating their bellies. And we see that also animated when he's in the car. So... She meets Jake, the now Jake, the janitor Jake, and they have a conversation about that. And it's very intense. He's really getting sad. So they hug each other and she leaves to a white place. So that means that actually this person goes to a dreamlike thing or doesn't even exist. And he, he even offers the same slippers that he offers her when they enter his parents' house. So it's really touching and moving that scene. And then he sets up a beautiful thing uh, to show how how he imagined his life with the girl, that it would be the perfect musical, the perfect theater play, like the Oklahoma play that he's always referring, because he refers from the beginning to a, um, a theater play that they were always putting there uh, in his school, that it was called Oklahoma, of course, the, the well-known Oklahoma uh, musical, and that anybody that played there is like a special person, you know? So he always wished he was playing in that musical because you see him in the beginning of the film when they were rehearsing about this, he, he as a janitor was there and taking small glances to the stage and the girls that were actually playing, the uh, rehearsing the Oklahoma play and they were looking at him, they were disgusted again. So when, when he, uh, she meets, Lucy meets uh, Jake as a janitor in the school, uh, Charlie Kaufman decides to make a beautiful scene with them, you know, like a musical scene with them. So it's like, a, <clears throat> like you see a, a beautiful ballet going on and beautiful music, and uh, and you see, you know, the the, the water, the water. Uh, how do you say the the things that you get the water? You drink water in the schools, uh, cre creating a fountain, you know, and. Um, there are two people just dancing the ballet and so beautiful, but it's not awkward because in the beginning we have the same couple dancing the ballet scene uh, when he as a janitor passes by and it was not awesome because they crashed on the, on the locker, uh, on the locker closets. Yeah, there in the, in the, in the hallway of the school, the school hallway. It's the same thing, but in the end, it's not awkward. It's beautiful. They're dancing beautifully. They're dancing perfectly. The music is perfect. Uh, so we see this couple dancing that they were in the same clothes as Lucy and him. So he actually creates his own musical scene before he leaves this world. Uh, and he creates that in his mind. It's so beautiful and so music and, and full of music and full of laughter and full of nice emotions. Then we have a nice um, scene that they actually go in the gym and then continue dancing there with snow starting to fall and the sun comes in and it's beautiful. And then a janitor comes in to threaten the woman and then they start chasing in this gym 
And actually what happens is that the janitor kills the kills Jake. This is how he saw it, right? And he takes out these beautiful red ribbons. After that, immediately after that, we see uh, Jake, janitor Jake, uh, putting on his clothes and going to his car. There, the reality kicks in. It's actually the way he died. He dies in the car. So we see uh, an animated black and white uh, the, sing the song of the uh, Joker and the um, ice cream uh, place. So we see that happening, completely hallucinating and psychedelic. And then the pig appears. So he takes out his clothes. He's dead already. The, peg the pig appears in animated form. And we see that the pig talks to him. And then the pig stands up because it was uh, on the ground. And we can see actually the, um, the same uh belly mark that was on the barn from the worms that were eating its belly so actually the pig leads him he's he's naked already and they start walking in the snow and in the hallways of the school so he's leading him to his death he's leading him to the white place you know like we say that it's probably white and um, and they have a nice conversation, and he's naked. He looks a lot like the pig. The pig is always bleeding when he's walking there. And then we go to the final scene, which is amazing, uh, that he actually receives his Nobel Award <laughs> uh, for the physicist, uh, for his uh, contribution in the physicist uh, world. So he receives that Nobel Award, and everybody's there. All the girls that didn't like him, all the, you know, his parents that were shit, to him, everybody that was there uh, cheering and applauding for him that he won this Nobel Award. Everybody has a makeup that everybody's old with this makeup. The makeup was making them like they're really old. Um, and then he starts actually doing uh, the thing that he also dreams dreamed of. Uh, the one was to, to get a Nobel in physics, in physics, and the other one was to be a part of the cast in Oklahoma. So there's starts a great scene that they actually they're bringing in um the barn setting behind him and he starts singing the song of the oklahoma musical and that's about it so there he died everybody applauses and this is the end of him so we see a fade to blue and from the blue we go back to the image that it's the saddest image of the film that the credits roll uh that we see blurred um, we see a beautiful, breathtaking place. Actually, it's the most beautiful place we've seen in the film up to now because everything else was really dark. The house was nice, but it was really low, dimmed light and not nice, you know, uh, in, in the ambience. You get so confused all the time about the things they're saying, uh, which is one of his main themes also, the misunderstanding between people. But this uh, setting that you see in the end is beautiful white snow because snow is white, it's pure, and it's always something positive when you see it like that and there's the tree and the school but in front of that there is the car covered in snow that means that he's dead already in there so it's really a sad one when this happens and this is how he decided to show that he's dead and finish with this scene like really blurred but if you stay until the end of the credits this blur becomes a real image again and it's yeah the saddest thing you've seen but also in a beautiful landscape so that was it. Uh, it was, you know, more easy to understand that scene in New York, of course. Uh, but what an amazing film again. Beautiful things. Uh, everything they say, you have to, you know, pause the image after some time and think about it. It's really beautiful the way he writes, the way he's a genius. He's a genius and I love this guy. I hope you enjoyed the film. If you haven't seen it, of course, if you listen to this podcast, probably you've seen it, but... It's a beautiful, brilliant film, and uh, yeah, I'm th I think he's aiming again. Not aiming, but I think he's going to be a part of the Oscars. Okay, it's a Netflix production, but who knows? And it's amazing. Uh, yeah, fascinating stuff. Thank you very much for being with me today, and uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next podcast, which is going to be the third part of Snegdoki. And uh, yeah, but check my website, www.costacalogias.com for workshops and my work. Thank you. Be safe. Peace, love, and understanding.